Okay, welcome everyone uh, to the talk, uh, what makes a Python debugger possible and how we can make it 100x faster by Tian Gao. Uh, Tian has asked, uh, he's going to have five minutes at the end uh, for any Q&A. So there's, um, uh, this microphone is going to be on that stand over there. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, you can come up to the microphone and, uh, and ask him at the end. So uh, yeah, take it over, Tian. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name's Tian. And uh, today, I'm going to talk about debugger. So a uh, quick survey beforehand. How many of you has used a Python debugger before? And how many of you know how it works and why it works? Great. You knew everything, so you're good to go. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, today, we're going to talk about the mechanisms. Uh, what makes a Python debugger possible? And how can we make it much faster? So. What makes a debugger? I mean, if you think about it, a debugger is just a program, right? And there, if you can achieve certain things, then you make a debugger. So in order to make a debugger, uh, you should be able to stop the program at an arbitrary position, right? Stop it there, and you know you can start checking out uh, what your program is doing. And you need to be able to examine the information. For example, the local variables, the call stacks, you know, understand what your program is doing, what is the current situation. And it's not a must, but it would be nice if you can run some dynamic code. For example, if you do uh, some evaluation of expressions or do um, some statements, right? Uh, call some functions or uh, assign a new value to your variables, that would be a really good thing. And last but not least, uh, you need to be able to control the execution, right? Step into, step outside, basically ask your program to run at a pace that you desire, like stop wherever you want so that you can, you know, understand what your program is doing. And today in our presentation, we are talking about an improc debugger or a debugger that runs in the same process as your program that you are debugging. So there is out of uh, process debuggers and they are kind of different story. So remember uh, in this, in today's uh, presentation, we're talking about a, debu uh, a debugger that lives in the same process as your uh, debugging. So how to bring up a debugger? That's something that we wanna talk before uh, we talk about all the mechanisms and uh, magics. Uh, I know people are using different kind of debuggers, right? Some, some people use the GUI debugger in VS Code or PyCharm, and uh, some people just prefer the old command line debugger. And uh, if, you, uh, if you use PDB, and, uh, which is the standard library debugger, you probably will do something like adding a breakpoint statement in your source code. Of course, you can do it uh, uh, in command line, but that's something that's very common to add it and then stop there. But if you are older, well, if you have longer experience <laughs> with, with Python, you are probably more familiar with pdb.setTrace, which does almost the exact same thing as breakpoint. Well, breakpoint is a very common term among all the debuggers in all different kind of languages, right? That's a, a common thing. But set trace is a really weird term. You don't hear that in any other languages. So why set trace? That is related to the magic behind the spine of all the Python debuggers and it's set sys that set trace. And in case you don't notice, they have the, they share the same name, set trace. So, what sys.setTrace does is that it can set a trigger function or a callback function that runs on certain events, like a call event, a function is being called, a return event, a function is being returned, a line event, a line of code is about to be executed, or an exception, when an exception is raised. Of course, it can deal with opcode, but that's a kind of different story, so we're not gonna talk about it today. And the actual mechanism, how it actually works is that after you do sys.setTrace, your trace function, that's the last, line of the, uh, the, the last line of the code there, for 
all the function calls after, it will trigger a call event. And in that call event, it will uh, bring up your trace function. You will call your trace function. And your trace function is supposed to return another trace function that deals with all the events inside the function. So you can return none. That means I don't want to trace this specific function. So any events in this function, and I don't care. Otherwise, you should return a function that deals with the return event, the line event, exception event in that specific function. And from the description above, you can realize that this specific mechanism is a global mechanism, which means as long as you set the trace, you all of the function calls will trigger the call events. It's impossible to turn off the call events on some of the functions and turn it on on others. That's impossible. It's a globally set mechanism. And the best granularity is function. You can either turn on all the events in a specific function, or you can turn off all the events in that function. There is no better granularity. It's either on, on, off, and on the function level. And one thing to uh, mention is that uh, it can be set manually for a function. For example, if you already miss the function call, I mean the function has called but has not returned, and you know you are inside the function, it's possible to set the trace function manually on that specific function so that you can get the line events and return events after the fact. That is something uh, that I mentioned here because it uh, it is useful uh, uh, later when we talk about PDB. So, what PDB.setTrace does, and this is the statement that is the alternative of breakpoint that we just mentioned earlier. So, PDB.setTrace is really just a normal Python function. There's no dark magic in it. So, inside that, it is called uh, it just uh, called sys.setTrace, the function that we mentioned. Uh, to set a trace function, to set a trace function, or it's basically a callback function, so that every time a, a event triggers, it, uh, it can call that specific function. And also, it sets the the, uh, the exact same trace function on all the frames above the caller, or to all the functions above the caller. So, like we said, you are supposed to set the trace event for a specific function when the function is being called. But all those functions uh, are already called, so you need to man manually flip the switch on those functions. That's what it does. And that's basically it. Yeah, that's it. And it, then it returns from the function and waits for the next trigger. So all the line events, all the event uh, return events, all those events are set in the functions above or the functions before, and just waits for a trigger. Normally, the trace function is called before executing the exact next line because that would be the next event, a next line event. And for the trace function, it receives the current running uh, frame as an argument. It's basically uh, which function it is in when it, there's a line event, when it's about to execute a line. And the PDB in, that, in the trace function just starts a command loop similar to REPL. I mean, you must have been writing, uh, written this code before, like just a while true and input, get a string, part string, decides what to do next, whether to break the break the loop or go to a loop again. That's exactly what PDB does. It just starts something like that, and then if you if the user uses the command like continue or uh, uh, next, it will. Uh, break the loop, uh, return from the uh, trace function, and wait for the next event to trigger. So that's how it stops the program there, and uh, how to enter PDB, and the uh, very basic structure of uh, what PDB does. What about information examination? Right, we need to uh, extract the information. And the most common one is the call stack. What are the function calls that lead to this point? And in Python, they are just frame objects. They are like a very good object that uh, CPython already put together for us and put a lot of information in. So there's no magic that we need to do there. 
the current frame, the very uh, recent frame, the frame that triggers the line event or re return event, is the argument that passed into our trace function, so we get that for free. And the caller of the current frame is in frame.fback, which is also put together by CPython already, so there's not, nothing we need to do there. And as you can imagine, it's basically just a linked list of frames, or we can call it a stack of frames, and we can just access everything. That's simple, right? And for each specific frame, you can access the local variables in frame.flocals, put together by CPython, and you can access the current line number, which line is about to execute in frame.flline number. It's there. And you can access the code object, which has information like where is this function defined, which file, or what is the function name of that function, of the information of the function itself. And you can access that in frame.fcode. So everything is just there. You don't even need a debugger to access these functions. You can just write your own program and you know access the frame and all these things. So no dark magic there. And code execution, that's something that we want, right? So we want to be able to evaluate an arbitrary expression. For example, if I already have a local variable x, I probably want to know what is x times two, right? And uh, it would be nice to be able to execute some code, assign some new variables to the, uh, assign some new values to the local variable, or you know, run some function. And if you think about that, that is basically just converting string to executable code, right? A string that is x space times space two, and you know, convert that to code and run that. And those functions are the definition of the built-in function eval and exec. So it's also something that CPython already provides us. Uh, the only thing that's a little bit tricky is how to store the results back into the local variables. Because if you are familiar with Python enough, uh, in Python functions, the local variables are like fast variables. They are not stored in a dictionary. They are not actually stored in F locals, they are stored in C level. So there are some tricks there to store back the uh, variables you store in the dictionary back to the uh, uh, fast variables. But that has been changed by PEP 667, and uh, so that's why I'm not going uh, too deep into this mechanism, because it's a different story in Python 3.13. Execution control. Uh, we have different names for executing control in different language, right? Uh, the most common ones are step into, step out, step over, and in Python or in PDB, we have different names like step, next, return, uh, which are mostly borrowed from GDB. Uh, but if you really like think about this, it's, it's just stop at some position, right? All those different kind of commands to uh, control the execution, it's basically just stop at different place uh, 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 in your program. And the only thing the debugger needs to do is to determine where to stop. And if you remember what uh, the mechanism for line events, before every single line of code execute, we fire a line event and we bring a PDB. So PDB knows, okay, there is a line that is about to execute. And the only thing PDB needs to know, uh, PDB needs to decide is whether we should stop now or we should continue. So it's pretty simple because we get events every time a line is about to execute. And PDB says, not here, not here, okay, here. And that's how PDB implements all its execution control command. So if you, uh, like uh, try to think about what I've talked about. The mechanism is pretty simple, isn't it? Like it's like C Python has already put together everything for us. They provide a sys.setTrace for us, and uh, it provides uh, all the information uh, 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 there in the frame, and uh, everything, right? But what about the overhead? If you think about that, like 
it it could be costly if you trigger event every single line of code, right? That could be uh that there that could be a a a really huge overhead. So we're gonna take an example here. So I have uh, this piece of code that I wanna debug, and there is an f function which is trivial, and I wanna set up breakpoint there. And I have a classic Fibonacci uh, function, which is implemented in recursive style. And in, a, in my test function, I run Fibonacci 24 first, and uh, then I run the F0. So without any debugger, so if you run this directly, it takes about six milliseconds. But if you attach PDB and set a single breakpoint in F, it takes about 460 milliseconds. That's about 100x slowdown. About 100x slowdown. It's closer to 100 than 10. Uh, why? It's actually pretty simple. I mean, everyone can figure it out. It's just because all the irrelevant events. Like I said, you can, you can only set the call events globally for every single function call. So as you can imagine in your Fibonacci, uh, functions, there are a lot of call events which are not relevant to your breakpoint at all. And of course, you have a lot of line events in your uh, Fibonacci functions that is not relevant. Uh, if you have listened to the presentation really carefully, you realize, wait, you said that the granularity is function. Why can't we turn off the events inside fifth, fun fifth function because those are not useful. We can only turn on events on fx, right? That's actually correct, but it's not implemented in PDB yet, so pull requests are welcome. But even if you turn off the events in a uh, fifth function, there will still be call events, and because Fibonacci is a recursive function, you will have a lot of call events, and as you can imagine, if you have a, a piece of code that's inside a single function, and you have a huge for loop in the function, and the line that you wanna break after that, you will still need to trigger all the line events within the for loop. You cannot turn those off, it's not an option. So even though in this case it can be optimized, there will still be a lot of other cases where this is an issue. And the issue itself is that the granularity is just too coarse. You can either set all the call events or not, and in a function, you can either set, uh, like enable all the events or not. That's the only thing we have. And that is slowing down our debugger. That makes debugger with breakpoints so much slower than the uh, normal uh, 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 program speed. The good news is that we have a new tool and it's called sys.monitoring. So sys.monitoring is a low-cost monitoring system that can be set locally on, an, on a, op, a code object. And what that means is that I, now I can only enable the call event on certain functions, but not the others. So that in the example above, I can only enable call event on the f function, or maybe not even call event, but I can. And I can disable the call event for the fib function. That's something that can reduce the uh, overhead a lot. And uh, system monitoring can enable any subset of events. Uh, system monitoring introduced a lot of uh, different kind of events, but even before for system set trace, we have different events like line and return and execute uh, 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 exception, right? And uh, in the function, you can enable them all or uh, none, uh, none of them. But for start monitoring, you can like pick and choose. Right? You can enable any events that is useful for you and dis uh, useful for you and dis disable the others. And the really good thing is that it's possible to disable the events uh, on an arbitrary line after the event is fired. So what that means is that if you have fire, uh, if you have a for loop inside a function and you already triggered a line event, and PDB can de decide that okay, this line is not useful to me, so do not send it to me anymore. Like, just do not request, uh, do not fire event on that line. And it's possible to just disable that, and uh, it will not uh, bother PDB again. So the difference, as you can imagine, is that before with sys.setrace, uh, sys the 
CPython sends all the events to PDB and says to stop on this line, stop on this line, and PDB says no, 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 no. But now it can say no and not anymore. So there will be no events fired. And all of those combined together means that it is possible for us to achieve almost zero overhead breakpoints. So we can implement it correctly so that we only fire events when we need. And uh, that means a 100x improvement. Everything sounds great, right? Uh, but there are some issues. First of all, the code itself would be much more complicated if we want the full capacity. I mean, before, we trigger on every single line event, and, uh, you know, uh, 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 we, we can just de decide when to stop inside the uh, inside the PDB's logic because we got all the events. But now we need to make sure that we set the correct events and the correct events fire, and uh, that, uh, that costs more work. Uh, so to enable, uh, in order to achieve the minimum overhead, we need to trigger as few events as possible. And the bigger problem is the backwards compatibility. Because it's a new mechanism, uh, there will be backwards compatibility issue. Uh, the mechanism is different, so even though we can keep PDB exactly, almost exactly the same, uh, make the PDB users feel like that only backend is changed, but it's impossible to keep BDB interface, and that is a big thing in your standard library, uh, whether we can make the change or not. And all, of course, when you switch in backend uh, this big uh, for the tool, it's possible that you break the tool while you're trying. So that's another thing. Uh, so that's why we have not uh, use this in PDB yet. We have some draft implementation that kind of worked, uh, but it's not in the official PDB yet. Nevertheless, there are tools that are onboarding, that are using this um, new mechanisms to achieve much better overhead. Uh, for example, uh, PyCharm uses PyDevD, and uh, PyDevD is trying system monitoring. And I believe Microsoft is working on the new backend for the VS Code, which also uh, uses system monitoring. And if you are into coverage, uh, there is uh, coverage.py tried this thing, but there is also another new coverage tool. And I believe they have a talk this afternoon as well, talking about system monitoring, how, how it can improve the speed, accelerate the speed of the, its tools. So uh, great news that the, there are others that are trying this out. So maybe in the future, we can have a debugger that's much, much faster than PDB, hopefully. OK, that's about everything. And I'm ready to take some questions if you have any. Thank you for the talk. Um, what other potential uses do you see maybe this being used for? Um, usually when you're debugging, it's great to have a fast debugger, because. but uh, do you see any ways it could be used in uh, production for like monitoring like failures on live threads or something like that? You mean for system monitoring? Yeah. Well, yes, of course, there are a lot of, uh, this is basically another monitoring tool. Like I said, uh, coverage uh, is using it. You can, you can obviously do the coverage thing because even for coverage, it, it, you don't want to trigger, sometimes you don't want to trigger multiple line events on a, a single line because that, you already know that line is covered. And, uh, uh, and, and yes, you can use a, little, a lot of, uh, you, you can use this on a lot of different kind of uh, tools. It doesn't have to be debugger. It just happened to, it just happened that uh, I am more into debugger, so I'm talking more about the debugger aspects of this specific new tool. Thank you. Uh, great talk. Thanks for promoting uh, low impact monitoring. I'm with the PyCharm team. We are shipping it in the latest. It did have the impact. It let us turn on the feature we always wanted to turn on, which is automatically stop on an exception. Mm -hmm. If you want to hear anything about it, come to the booth, talk to us. Oh, so this is an advertisement. <laughs> 
yeah, great, uh, great presentation. And thank you for your stewardship of PDB. Um, you do a lot of great work on it. Um, I have a question about, you talked in this uh, about the granularity problem, mm -hmm. and that's kind of the fundamental like issue with speed. That's the 100x uh, mm -hmm. that we were, we were promised here. When I'm debugging, a lot of the times, I don't really know what I want until I'm going to be fairly deep into it. Mm -hmm. And it seems like there's kind of a conflict between I know specifically I want a breakpoint somewhere versus I have no <laughs> idea what's going on in this program and I'm not going to know until I do some fairly expensive computation. Do you see that that's like a fundamental tension or is it we can have both of those going forward? So if you want to step like more in the more finer granularity, that is always fine. I mean, we are not changing the way that PDB works. You can also you can always step into functions as much as you want. You can have the best granularity while you are debugging. We're talking about how to throw off the useless events. If I set a breakpoint that's far, far away, can I run the program at full speed? Like, but you, you, you will have all the same functions, like step, next, everything like that, just, just like now. It's just changing the backend. It's not changing the actual function of PDB. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. In the past, I have noticed that PDB has, a, has problems with deeply recursive complex functions. Uh, now I understand more about what was going on there. Is there any way to uh, say I want to only want this function to break after it's recursed 50 times or something? Uh, for PDB now, not really. Because basically, well, you can set some condition there, but it will also trigger all the events. It will check if it's, if it's 50 yet, 50 yet, 50 yet, 50 yet, mm -hmm. and it will cause a lot of overhead. So it's uh, for the current PB, no. Yes, you can change your source code. Uh, yeah. Yes, that's <laughs> always a possibility. You can change your source code. <laughs> Hi, great talk, thank you. Um, are we talking about uh, 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 making it more performant to the point where we could use the debugger as a continuation? It's definitely a possibility, yes. Awesome, stoked, thanks. <laughs> Any more questions? I think there's a microphone in the back as well if, if folks want to, uh, you know, you don't have to trek all the way up here. I, I think we're good. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you, everyone.